Welcome to our final Sunday of Christival 2020, at least the October monthly version. I hope that you've enjoyed Christival so far as we have explored the theme of hope through our God who saves and heals. We've got some new and exciting changes for Christopher going forward to make it new and even better. You'll be hearing more about it as we come, but what we're planning is rather than devoting a single month a year, spreading Christopher, our celebration of the arts in worship throughout the year, where we'll be doing it on the fifth Sunday of the months that have five Sundays. Be looking for more details of that as we go into the next year. I want to thank everybody for a wonderful in-person worship service this past Sunday. Thank you for all of your kind words and appreciation that you've shown. And we will be doing that again with Worship on the Lawn and Drive next Sunday, November the 1st. Look again for details, but we'll have basically the same setup that we had last Sunday where you can sit in seats, socially distanced, or you'll be able to stay in your car if that's what you are more comfortable. And now join me as we close out Christopher with a new piece of special music from Canangela, You Are My All in All. Scripture reading is from Psalm 43, 1 through 5. Vindicate me, God, and champion my cause against an unfaithful nation. Rescue me from the deceitful and unjust person, for you are my God of my refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about in sorrow because of the enemy's oppression? Send your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Then I will come to the altar of God, to God my greatest joy. I will praise you with the lyre, God my God. Why, my soul, are you so dejected? Why are you in such turmoil? Put your hope in God, for I will still praise him, my Savior and my God. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Hello, everyone. Today we are meeting with Job, who is in the middle of great troubles and loss, experiencing things that many of you might be able to relate to. We are in the land of Uz, not Oz, about 4,000 years ago. Thank you, Job, for letting me talk <laughs> to you today. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, what, who, who are you talking to? To. I'm talking to the viewers. So this is a camera. Don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm talking to the viewers. Don't don't just don't even think about it. So that's let's, let's start from the beginning. What was your life like before everything happened? Well, I don't mean to brag or anything, but I was and I still am a God-fearing man who worked hard. That's what people call me and tell me and say about me. I'm not perfect, but I had a lot of things. I had servants and a big house, lots of servants, owned a very large farm, but what I valued the most was my family, my wife and my children. I had 10 children, seven sons and three daughters. Oh, that sounds nice and just wonderful. But what happened? <laughs> well, first of all, my livestock were all killed or stolen, every animal gone. Then most of my servants were killed, and on the same day, a windstorm came, destroyed my house, and killed all of my children. None survived. They all died. Oh, that is awful. How, how did you react to that? I'm doing my best to accept it. I know that God gives and that God can take away and I keep telling myself that as I continue to worship God. So what happened after you lost your house and children along with most of your herds and servants? Well, my health began to suffer. It was awful. My whole body broke out in these boils and bruises. And then everybody started shunning me. Because of my skin condition, I became an outcast. And I still have to live outside, away from everyone. Oh, my. I, I have a hard time imagining. But surely your wife stood by <laughs> you. You'd already gone through such loss together. Not really. My wife was quite angry with God, and she really wanted me to be angry with God also. She said that I should curse God and die. I told her that we can't just worship God when things are good. We need to keep worshiping God even in the middle of adversity, especially when we don't feel like it. Mm. <laughs> That's hard to do. But what about your friends? Or was it only your wife who was giving you a hard time? No, three of my friends came to visit. It started out nice at first. They were there to sympathize and to comfort me. For seven days, they didn't even say a word to me. All they did was weep and pray. But then suddenly I had it. I couldn't keep everything bottled up inside me anymore. I started complaining big time. I mean, I'd always thought that God blessed the good people. And he only let bad things happen to those who were bad people. I hear you there. I'm sure most of us would have felt that way. Did you curse God in your anger? No. Even when I was angry, I never cursed God. There were times I cursed my birthday and wished that I'd never been born. So how did your friends react to this outburst? Eliphaz asked me, if I wasn't trusting God enough. According to him, I should have been happy that God was disciplining me. He said that I needed to repent so that God could help me. But that only made things worse. I was so angry with what he said. He just assumed that I was guilty. You don't think that I 
had tried to make amends for my sins. I, soon as all of this started happening, I searched my mind, went over all my actions to make sure that there was nothing I had done wrong and not confess to God. I even made sure to give burnt offerings for things that me and my family did so that God could forgive us even for sins we weren't aware of. Most of us don't need anyone telling us when we've done something wrong. <laughs> we usually know. Besides, I thought they were there to comfort you, not to stir things up. Exactly! Then Bilbad said the same thing as Eliphaz, but he was even less compassionate. He reminded me that our traditional teaching is that God rewards the good and God punishes the bad, just as I had thought. So obviously, in his mind, I had done something wrong. Otherwise, God would have restored everything to me already. That is rather direct, not to mention incredibly harsh. Ouch. <laughs> I tried to explain to him that although tradition has its place, it's not always our best source of knowledge, certainly not all by herself. While our elders have wisdom, they aren't perfect. God reveals himself in so many ways, like in nature. Just consider God and his power and how we can see his majesty and try and understand his ways. I told them, I'm at God's mercy, not yours. You can't judge my heart. Hmm. So what did your friends say to that? Well, Zophar took his turn then, and he was even harsher than the others. He told me to look at the facts and said that I probably deserve to suffer even more than I'm suffering. I mean, the sores are just bursting even now. And he went on since... God is merciful that I should confess the sin that I found in my heart when I searched it. And if I made this good confession, God would reward my good confession with riches. And uh, how's, that, how's that working <laughs> out for you right now? <laughs> it isn't and it wasn't. I was getting more and more upset the longer it went on. I mean... Who are they to judge me? None of us are perfect. And none of us can understand God in his ways. God definitely has things to say to all of us. How can any of us, just mere creations of God, question the almighty God who created everything? God does allow bad people to get rich and to live lives that look good. I've seen it happen that way. It sounds like you all weren't accomplishing much, just arguing with each other, really. Did your friends have anything else to say? <laughs> well, Bill Dad had to get back into things. He was not happy and said that we'd talk more when I got straightened out and started talking reasonably. He went on to say, it's obvious that you are cursed. I doubt you even know God at all. What nerve did he have talking to me like that? That sounds pretty judgmental. How, how did you respond to that? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I mean, I asked, how long will you all torment me? Even if I have done something wrong, I don't deserve this. I mean, I started to blame God I, I felt that God had taken everything from me, all my wealth and my precious children. And, and then... Job, Job, how can a created one analyze the creator of the entire universe? Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth and how it all fits together? 
Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place? What is the way to where the light lives? And where does darkness reside? Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Who provides food for the raven when its young cry out to God and wander about for lack of food? Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you watch when the doe bears her fawn? You've accused me of a lot. What answer do you have now for your Creator? I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, and I will say no more. Don't stop now. Get ready to answer me. Would you really challenge my justice? Would you declare me guilty to justify yourself? Do you have an arm like God's? Can you thunder with a voice like mine? I know that you can do mighty things and that your purposes can't be thwarted forever. I spoke of things that I do not understand. I know that you can do all things and that your purposes can't be thwarted forever. I spoke of things I do not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. My ears had heard of you, but now my ears hear your voice. You've brought me into your presence. I now know in my heart what I used to just know in my head. I used to think about you but not know you. Therefore, I will despise myself and repent in sin and ashes. I will try to remember that you are in charge and that you do love us. It's awesome and wonderful to know that the creator of the world the creator of the universe loves us and wants a relationship with us. Eliphaz, I am angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. Go and make a burnt offering and my servant Job will pray for you and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you as your foolishness deserves. Wait. Well, what just happened? <laughs> Anyways, please continue. Yeah. I trusted God more than ever after I heard God's voice, but uh, I still have these horrible boils and bruises. I've still lost everything. So I still couldn't help but think about how, about all the different reasons that maybe I was suffering. Or why any of us could suffer? That's a question asked by everyone who's ever lived. So, what did you come up with? Well, we can suffer because of our sin, and God might allow us to face the consequences in our lives to teach us a lesson. But then there are times that we suffer because somebody else has sinned and we've done nothing wrong. There is sin in this world. Bad things do happen. Mm. You're right there. I mean, not everything that happens is God's will. And you don't know about him, but Joshua, who comes along several thousand years from now, was facing a scary time. And God assured him, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Is that all, or did you come up with any other reason that God may allow suffering? Well, sometimes God allows things in our lives to, uh, to test us. But this test isn't graded. God isn't wanting us to fail. This testing is to help us learn more about our relationship with God and to experience firsthand how God never leaves us no matter what. 
Going through hardship can teach us how much we depend on God. Mm -hmm. And then when we get through our suffering, thanks to God being with us, it teaches us to keep trusting in God. And going through these um, experiences can also be a way for the world to see how God helps us. Wait, you say you mean that suffering can be a way of being a witness? Yes. I mean, think about it. If you tell people that God is always there for you and nothing bad happens and they never see you go through anything bad, how can they see that God helps us if God never has to help us? That is a very good point. Jesus, God's son, who, again, you haven't mm. learned about yet, but he's coming, he's coming, don't worry, not in your lifetime, but he's coming, commanded his followers to teach others to obey him. And to remember, I am always, or I'm with you always, to the end of the age. And sometimes God may allow us to suffer and experience God's presence and comfort in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others in any trouble with, their, with the comfort we received from God. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense too. I'm so thankful that God is big enough to take our questions and doesn't leave us even when we get angry with God. But I did have to apologize to God for throwing my fit of anger and for not totally trusting God to be with me. And so I prayed. I confessed my sin in doubting God's presence, power, and love. And I prayed for Eliphaz, Bill, Dad, and Zophar. I prayed that God would forgive their foolishness. I know that you must be wondering how things work out. Everybody always wonders that when they're going through hardships. Do you want to know? <laughs> That's definitely tempting. But no thanks. I'm going to keep doing my best to trust and lean on God. I'll let God work things out. Whatever happens. Thank you very much for being with us today. I know you don't understand everything that's going on, but this is going to mean a lot to a lot of people. Thank you. God heard Job's prayer and healed his body and gave him back twice as much as he had before. Job had seven more sons and three more daughters. That may not sound like twice as many children, but don't forget, Job will see his first 10 children when he goes to be with them in heaven. When we trust God, God rewards us with treasures that no one or anything can take from us. Those who believe in God and accept his gift of forgiveness and rebirth through Jesus will receive ultimate eternal blessing through God's constant presence here in this life and then in heaven. In heaven, there will be no more suffering and no sorrows, no s boils and sores. So this is Alex checking out from the land of us, not Oz, for now, encouraging you to let God help you through whatever you are going through. God will work things out. God never leaves you alone. You can trust in that.
weaker chord David played and it pleased the Lord You don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this The fourth, the fifth The minor fall, the major lift The baffled king composing that you've enjoyed our Christabel service so far today as we've heard from the psalmist and then Job's story and then heard some teachings from Jesus and enjoyed wonderful artwork by Oren and musical selections from Canangela and Jackson. And I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to wrap up our Christoval teaching this month, our theme being hope through the God who saves and heals, but with a particular focus today on how God is with us 
at all times, no matter what. Thinking back a couple of weeks as we've walked through Christopher this month, I want to focus to begin with on that phrase, God who saves and heals. The word saves and heals attempt to translate a couple of Hebrew and Greek words that really don't come into English very well. The Hebrew word is shalom, a holistic well-being or wellness word that connotes a sense of peace, tranquility, well-being, both physical and spiritual, a saved person and a healed person on all levels, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And the Greek word that is translated in the New Testament using both saved and healed is similar. It's much more holistic than our English words. When Jesus addresses somebody's spiritual well-being, it's usually translated as salvation or saving. But when Jesus addresses a person's physical condition, it's translated as healing. But I think that healing can go beyond just a spirit or physical healing. It can also include spiritual and emotional and even social healing. So today we're looking at this healing that comes even in tough times because life isn't always rosy and isn't always easy. The psalmist today protested to God, seeking vindication, even feeling like God had rejected them. To their core, their very soul, the psalmist says, I am dejected and in turmoil. But even during that tough time, the psalmist turned to God, put hope in God, saying, I will praise him, my Savior and my God. And that's where we found Job, suffering emotionally, physically, having his family and all of his life, indeed, along with his health, torn from him. And yet he also turned to God, a blameless, upright, God-fearing person that couldn't find any explanation for his hardship, certainly couldn't find blame with himself and struggled with arguing with God, even blaming God at times, but never completely cursing or separating himself from God. And we, along with Job, explore that ever eternal question of why? And especially, why me? And Jackson's rendition of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah has its own tension. That song is frequently viewed as a spiritual song because it is Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And it also has some allusions to biblical stories of David in particular, yet he's puzzled by this idea of love and really is puzzled with what he's saying hallelujah about. Indeed, the lyrics close with talk about a broken hallelujah. We know God loves us, but we don't feel it. We know that we're to worship God in the hard times, like Job said, but we don't feel like it. We don't even feel like worshiping the God that we aren't experiencing. Our hallelujahs are broken. Amy Grant has a song along the same lines, but taking a little bit different view called Better Than a Hallelujah. And the things that she goes through this psalm saying, 
God appreciates Ephah more than a hallelujah or the mother's tears in the dead of night. A drunkard's cry, certainly something I personally can relate to as I cried out to God, God, help me, I'm an alcoholic. Or a soldier's plea not to die. Honest cries of a breaking heart. A dying man giving up the fight. Better than a hallelujah to God's ears. Better than a church bell ringing. Better than a choir singing out. It's worshiping in good times and in bad times by crying out to God, by seeking relationship with God. Job's story teaches us that evil exists, that not everything that happens is God's will. And even so, we can be assured of God's presence in the storm of life, even if God doesn't re remove the storms from our lives. God is with us no matter what. So it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to take off our masks, let down our facades, be honest with God, be open and vulnerable with each other. When God gets us through a storm in life, it can be a witness to others. It can be a witness to other Christians, strengthening their faith. It can be a witness to ourselves, strengthening our faith. And it can be a witness to those who don't know God, who don't know the strength that we have in our relationship with God to get through the hard times. They can learn through our visual witness, our conveying experience openly and vulnerably and letting them see our struggle to come to know the God who gives hope through salvation and healing. Our God who saves and heals. Prayer concerns that I want to mention to you as we close our service and move into a time of prayer. Continue to remember Melissa Page as she recovers from her fall and her broken pinky finger. Steve Chenoweth, who had a heart procedure on Thursday, uh, has come through it well and is, is recovering. Pray that his surgery is successful and that he continues to recover. Martha Ward, as she faces various health concerns and is seeking to learn more from the specialist and consults. My former uh, professor and friend, Dr. Melissa Browning, as she's preparing uh, to have a stem cell transplant in the next few weeks for her um, breast cancer that's metastasized into her bones. Oren has requested prayer for a couple of people uh, at the retreat, first of all, a woman named Sybil who just lost her daughter and lost her son not that long ago. And also one of the residents there whose grandson has lost his job. And he was the primary support for the family and it may even threaten her ability to remain at the retreat. Let's remember Kelly Dixon as she uh, has been laid off and is continuing to struggle with the Department of Labor and the unemployment authorities in the county. Um, certainly uh, understandable tough times. And Jalon, who's uh, back in school, and as often is the case when we go back to school, he's also ch challenged with one of his classes in particular. And let's remember Donna Loftus, uh, the stepmom of Delinda, as she's struggling, of course, with the loss of her husband, Charles, but also she's struggling with high blood pressure and has an oncology uh, checkup that uh, she hasn't uh, gotten reports back from. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Healing, saving Lord, we come to you. Thank you for creating us. Thank you for recreating us through Jesus Christ. 
And thank you for the promise to always be with us. Help us to remember that promise even when it doesn't come to mind easily and even when we don't feel particularly close to you. Thank you for the precious gift of love perfectly exemplified through Jesus Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. And now as we close our time of worship and we eagerly await for the day when our faith shall be sight, let us join together putting our hope in God, continuing to praise God our Savior, our Healer, and our Lord. And now, enjoy Canangela as she brings this crystal to a close with our musical benediction, the classic hymn of comfort, It Is Well With My Soul. Thank mm-hmm. you.